Despite the imperfect market for legal weed, it's still rapidly growing. It's become a $10 billion a year industry, and that money is cutting into cartels' profits. In fact, a new study shows, and this is what I was talking about at the top of the show, drug kingpins have all but stopped trying to smuggle the devil's lettuce through our southern border. The average Border Patrol agent confiscated 78% less marijuana this year than they did just five years ago in 2013, and that is mostly due to legalization. So what would happen if, legalize, if we legalize weed federally? And does this logic extend to other harder drugs? Let me ask the author of that study how legalizing marijuana is securing the border, the border wall, drug smuggling, and lessons for immigration policy. David Beard is with me. He's an immigration policy analyst at the Cato Institute. Welcome, David. Thanks for having me. So let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, for people who are fans of the show, uh, Narcos, they have seen this narco capitalism in, in full effect as the demand for drugs in this country has not abated uh, regardless of the drug war. But what has legal recreational and medicinal marijuana done to some of the cartels? Look, you have to understand that for 80 years, Border Patrol has been justifying its budgets, hiring more agents, uh, deploying drones to the border, building fences, primarily to stop drug trafficking and human trafficking along the border. None of it has worked. Mm -hmm. It hasn't made a difference. And what we've seen is that only since legalization that you saw this 78 percent reduction in drug smuggling, marijuana smuggling along uh, the southern border between these ports of entry where Border Patrol uh, is controlling. And so really, they haven't made a dent until you start legalizing. And, and that really should be a lesson uh, for those drug warriors out there. Uh, so let's talk about that. So what is, what is the conclusion that you can draw from that? in regards to other substances and what would a process look like if, if you really because you know if, if you look at the statistics half a million people have died yeah. in the drug war that is a staggering number that's almost yeah. 10 times as many people as we lost in the Vietnam conflict sure. and you know you're talking about journalists and lots and lots of innocent civilians and children and families so if, yeah. if they're if they're still uh, importing crystal meth and heroin and other drugs, how do you go about legalizing that uh, and, and allay people's fears about society falling apart? Well, ultimately, you have to look at models that actually work. Portugal uh, fully decriminalized all drugs many years ago, and its society has far from fallen off a uh, cliff. In fact, you, if you look at drug use rates, uh, another Cato Institute study analyzed those, and they haven't gone up. In fact, teen use has gone down. And really, once you move something out of the shadows mm -hmm. into the regulated market, people out there are not looking for fentanyl, for example. Fentanyl is being put into our heroin supplies and into our cocaine supplies uh, purely as a result of the fact that drug smugglers, it's easier to conceal uh, fentanyl than heroin because it's so much more potent. And so you have this unintended consequence that's causing all of these opioid deaths. And fentanyl is now the number one killer, as you know. Yeah. And that's a, uh, that's a result of prohibition. And, and the knee-jerk reaction is always, well, we have to stop it. We have to stop the supply. Yeah. But we really haven't had the, the kind of honest discussion about demand that we have to. And it's very interesting because, as you point out, the inverse oftentimes happens, and uh, I will be very curious to see when that sort of logic actually bleeds into government. Uh, do you foresee marijuana being reclassified, rescheduled in the coming year? Well, something has to shift. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, the regulatory situation is untenable. You have all of this investment in cash. You have the largest uh, consumer of marijuana, now California, having fully legalized uh, the product. National prohibition isn't working. No one thinks it's working. Uh, so really, it's up to Congress to make yeah. the shift. And so w we'll see. But uh, I don't see it changing in the short term. But hopefully in a few years, things will shift. All right. And maybe it'll happen uh, quickly as we've reached critical mass. David, thank you so much. Thank you.